Hello, and welcome to Crafts and Crime. I'm Amy. I'm Elaine. And as always, we have a craft and a crime. Woo! It's so funny, I realize we do that every, every single time. time. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Me too. when I was so editing well. yesterday, I was like, oh, we do we do that every time. But I guess I, people know what to expect. <laughs> <it's right. laughs> we are reliable. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can count on us to be consistent and also not consistent. <laughs> uh, so, um what's new i already know oh <laughs> um so i'm super excited because i got some super rare i am simani eggs hatching eggs coming uh what's today tuesday Today's tuesday Today's tuesday mm-hmm. um did they tomorrow ship yesterday oh uh, yeah i think they're supposed to be okay. here tomorrow and so i'm really excited because if you don't know they are a type of indonesian chicken and they are gorgeous and they're all black and i guess they're like tongue bones meat it's Mm -hmm. all black Mm -hmm. um i don't intend to eat them but that's kind of cool which is sort of funny too because they also they have a very plain egg yeah (laughs) it's like a cream with a very tinted i guess pink sometimes Mm -hmm. but so i'm super excited yeah oh i totally forgot they sent me a message and they sent me 14 oh yeah but remember this was the thing i thought about the eggs are small size, so like frizzle, so they may oh, all fit. Okay, because they're not. If not, I have another incubator. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I guess they um yeah lay yeah. little eggs. We were really incubating it up this last time with three incubators <laughs> in my kitchen. <laughs> we had your incubator that holds like twelve yeah, big ones, the big ones, uh-huh. and then mine that holds the rectangle one. Yeah, the rectangle one holds a dozen, mm-hmm. and then the new one, the new one. <laughs> holds like that's what i put all my quail eggs in yeah and it'll hold like 24 quail egg, or something like no mm-hmm. 30 <laughs> it holds a lot yeah i think it holds 24 chicken eggs it's really big but yeah i can't remember now i like, can't remember i just know either. i had a lot of quail eggs like out of sight out of mind i can't remember mm-hmm. that was fun though we're gonna I end know. up having to invest in one of those like cube ones that have like five rack trays inside oh i know we'll have to do like halvesies yeah <laughs> <laughs> because they we will probably this is gonna be our little venture yeah because we could sell them <laughs> um you know even if swap it's we can lot. trade mm-hmm. good breeds. For, like, we're trying to get rid of one right now yeah nicely so <clears throat> yeah he's nice he's pretty but we just can't have another rooster yeah and then, of course, I found another kind of chicken I really, really like. Oh, my gosh. It is the Barnevelder oh. with the, it is a silver double lace. Oh, is that it's the feathers. one with the, the one that looks wings? fake? Yeah. It's their, their plumage pattern is so pretty. It just looks ridiculous. Like, not I real. Know. That's the problem is I'm and like. original jungle fowl, like the oh, OG yeah. chickens. Oh, they're so pretty. I, I go more towards like the egg color <laughs> yeah. because like I like opening up my fridge and like at one point it we had, cool. um, before they died, like due to heat or age or, you know, just randomly they'll mm-hmm. die. Um, <clears throat> at one point we had like the Orpington eggs, which were that the giant cream ones. Mm-hmm. We had the small cream ones we had the dark brown ones we had the light brown ones the green from the olive acre Mm. and the blue from the easter acre and so now didn't you say one of those was um a copper maron yeah i'm pretty sure fuzzy cheeks is Mm -hmm. the oh my god i forgot uh is a is a mix of the whatever the thing that gives them the beard which I completely um, forgot. I don't know. And then the Moran. They're for sure Morans. I think yeah, that's the what dark we black ones are like the Moran Samani because mm-hmm. the backyard breeder, like the person that we got the eggs from, had a ton of fancy breeds. And so pretty much like the super, the black one that has like the all black face, that's mm-hmm. pr- that's for sure a Samani mix. Yeah. Um, but I, I think they're Morans is also, as also, <laughs> I think they are also Morans. So I think we're going to have some dark brown, I hope. That's really what will. I want. Because like right now we just have like brown, blue, and cream. Mm-hmm. And so Jack really wants the Olive Acre again. That's his like they one are request. so cute. So I might eventually do that. Because <clears throat> the three that, well, the two that we have out there now, the older ones are like, mm-hmm. they're older. They're like yeah. coming up on six years old. So oh, yeah. It's like. Frizzle's the youngest, you said. Yeah. Just... Frizzle we got last year, I think. Mm-hmm. Or the year before. Yeah. So she's either one or two. But 
Yeah. So, um, and then when you incubate your chicken eggs, I don't know if I'd have any to add. Um, we need to do a swap of the chicken and the rooster today. Oh yeah. And um, <clears throat> but I am. Gonna, <laughs> I did both at the same it. time. <laughs> but I am going to um, probably starting. I should have started today, but I forgot mm-hmm. about it and I put them in the fridge. I'm mm-hmm. going to start gathering the quail eggs and incubate oh, yeah. some of those because we have what was it six males to seven females which is not a good ratio i believe so so we need more females and we need to cycle out the males and i just last night hard boiled all Mm -hmm. those quail eggs (laughs) lillian loves them is it like a tiny little pencil yolk in the middle like a a pencil eraser surprisingly a, a decent yolk yeah but it's creamier like it's good it's actually avery was like i like these better than chicken eggs they are a very um, creamier flavor. Uh-huh. They they do smell like chicken eggs. You yeah, know, you open it up, they're eggs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if I just didn't hard boil them to like really hard, but mm. I did like the four minutes. Um, and it wasn't like a rolling boil when I added them, and they were cold. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that had anything to do. But uh, they were really good. Yeah. So I'm thinking of pickling. Well, not really pickling them, but marinating them, uh-huh. I guess, in the soy yeah. sauce and ginger um to ramen add into eggs. yeah to make ramen yeah. eggs little quail eggs because like those ladies i watch on youtube they do the the ramen all the fancy ramen yeah and they always have little tiny quail eggs and i'm like how cute that i do have to say so cute they are not fun to peel because they're so tiny Gosh. so i did this like technique where like i okay i tried a couple where like bang mm-hmm. it on the counter like you would <laughs> and uh-huh. peel it and that didn't work and then i rolled it in my hands like mm-hmm. i was making a meatball <laughs> so i was like doing this and it kind of crumbled <laughs> off a bit and that kind of worked uh-huh. and then i did another thing where like i'd hold it and i'd like use my knuckle to pop it and then like find the membrane and like peel <laughs> it around and uh-huh. that worked so it's just a learning curve. I've never peeled a quail egg before. Did so. you check any prices on that nifty tool you had showed me that was like the little rollers? Oh, no, I egg? didn't. That's so weird. Yeah, you like put it over a bowl or your sink and it like you can just hand crank it and uh-huh. it's got two little rollers and it'll roll the egg. <laughs> I think you have to do it over the sink with water. Mm-hmm. So just like maybe over a strainer to catch all the eggshells. Yeah. <laughs> but then you could put the eggshells in your compost. But Cute. yeah, so that's what I did last night at like 1030. <laughs> I was sleeping. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. I know because I texted you and you didn't answer. (laughs) Happened. (laughs) It happens all the time. It's fine. It was weird. But yeah, so that's what we have going on. Chicken business. Always chicken business. I know. Maybe we should start sharing this in the chicken group. So if you want to listen to us talk about chickens for ten minutes, (laughs) right? Our experiences. I know. It's but, the best. They make me so happy when oh, they do I their know. little hops. I know. And sometimes you can tell they do it because they're excited mm-hmm. and like happy and they're like, and especially they, like, when you came up with like the mealworms yes. or the, the, what was the other worms that you had? Uh, oh, they're soldier fly larvae. Oh, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They come running up all like, hey, yeah. What do you have? Yep. They're and then like, all the ready. scratch grain. Yes. I and they'll that. eat out of your hand. I'm just, I'm just spoiling them so that mm-hmm. they'll like us a lot. Yeah. And then they come over to my house and I'm like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Welcome to the pits of despair. <laughs> no treats for you. <laughs> no, Eggs we give, only. <laughs> you know, we just give them treats here and there, but yeah, they get a lot of whatever. <laughs> I literally asked today, Do, can you make your chickens fat? Like <laughs> on accident? <laughs> Maybe. I, I think it's the type of feed. If mm. you have, or like, if I feed feeds. them like nothing but bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a high protein diet, man. Those eggshells would be so hard, oh, like with all God. the protein and the calcium. <laughs> those would be good eggs to shelf, though. Mm-hmm. We're so gonna water glass eggs, but something I guess I kind of found out that's a little scary. Is I guess it's kind of still dangerous because you're not supposed to wash them. Yeah, yeah. So there's they like, can't be a, washed. yeah. So there's like still the botulism risk and stuff. I was like, oh mm, my goodness. I know. That's why. Maybe I'm not. Like, eh, I'll just make a lot of. <laughs> well, I just had like, so many eggs today. I had isn't like an there egg salad the other sandwich. thing you can do mm-hmm. that can make them like super self sh- self shable? <laughs> shape shable. Shape shable. Um, you rub them in like mineral oil, right? Oh, I don't but know. But I can't remember if you wash the bloom off of that. The bloom is like the coating when they poop them out. Mm-hmm. Um, and the so. The chicken pooped the egg. The chicken pooped the egg. <laughs> <laughs> Lily would say. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so I, I can't remember, oh, but no, I know I'd have that. To look in I've watched it in like those um, group. doomsday prepper shows. Mm-hmm. I remember this lady was like, "Oh, you just take it was like Vaseline or mineral oil or mm-hmm. something crazy," and just but I can't remember the pores. Mm-hmm, exactly. But I cannot remember if they. Uh, I know there's like the salt it. one. Is it? 
Are oh my god, where you or? like salt preserve them? Yeah, I I've watched the one where know. they um, salt cured the yolks, and that looks good. And mm. I want to try that. You like oh crack yeah, the, where they separate like, the yolk yes. and you like salt it, and then you I like crumble it up, and then you can like salad. it. I want to do that. Okay, we gonna do, do it. <laughs> Okay. With our bright, beautiful, sunny chicken I eggs. Know. Well, technically yours because yours mine won't laying. be laying for a while. Yeah. I got three active layers. And then we got a lot of slackers. No, they're just, Gosh, they're they're just, just too babies. young. <laughs> it's just babies. Just costing us money. Okay, just kidding. we did it again. We talked for 10 minutes about chickens. <laughs> well, at least we're consistent again. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if people yeah. don't want to hear it, they but can pretty much this just This is literally the... what we're doing yeah, like, it's right our life. now. Yep. If you so, like us and you want to know, this is what's happening. It's our yeah. daily checkup. Well, I guess it's not daily, but no. weekly, well, weekly. bi weekly. <laughs> yeah. Weekly or weekly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In other news, I forgot another loaf in the in bread. In other machine. news? In other news. In other news. What kind of bread? Uh, just a regular sandwich bread, and I forgot it for a week. Chicken bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not moldy. It's just like rock hard. So I'm going to toss it out for the chicken. That's a good idea. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, do that all Dang. the time. I make bread. See, it that's when so you need then. the skewer thing that I was looking at. The little hanging treat hanger. Oh, so they yeah. just peck it and it doesn't get all poopy. Yeah. No, I'll just I'll just set it on their platform for their food. There you go. That's a good yeah. idea. Although they do like that muddy water. Oh, so gross. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, they go berserk over that a muddy puddle. That is so weird. Yeah. You literally sprayed water on the, the floor mm-hmm. and they the were like, holy crap. It's the best They literally have poop in it. <laughs> yeah. And they have a fresh bucket of like, what is that? Like 20 gallons of water? Yeah. And they're just like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like the mud water. <sighs> Anyways. Okay. Sorry. It's a lie. <clears throat> oh, you weren't apologizing to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. It's your turn. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, no, I don't apologize to you. You just have to put up with me. No, I'm kidding. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I will forever. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing the craft today, and this actually, I'm surprised I got so much because I was like, oh, that's a simple topic, and then I was like, <laughs> six pages of notes later. Yeah, I'm like why? So I because we are thorough. Let me tell you. Yes, I made sure I did leave a couple <laughs> things out because I was like, I don't know how to say that, and I don't mm. really, and it didn't really have a lot of relevance okay well it did but not not enough but um i will preface this by saying a lot of this is straight from wikipedia because mm. a lot of times you know it's like you can't really change a sentence i change it how much i can but i'm like it sounds really good this way yeah. so i'm not plagiarizing wikipedia i'm saying up front i'm citing them i'm using a lot of w- wikipedia um hmm. it's just like as always we good do what source we can. Of, yeah but i did read um and i'll cite them in the source and notes. seriously let me tell you in my entire life I had never Googled these topics. No, I know. It's really out of the way stuff. So it really I think is. it's okay. But yeah, I get it. I get it. Sometimes the resources we have, like most Are of the limited. color is the color is coming from the same exact source websites as mm-hmm. my previous colors. So mm-hmm. I'm just giving you a different one because sometimes... there really is some so much limited information. Yeah. And it's it. funny because I I do the job of like going to Wikipedia you know, and taking those, you know, getting sources, if I can't find enough in a simple Google search, which mm-hmm. is what happened this week, um, or it was like redundant, same information, I yeah. would go and look at the sources that reference stuff, but it's all the same. It's like literally copy and pasted. And so I'm like, I don't know. It's just really good information. But anyways, I should get cut to the chase. <laughs> <laughs> My craft today is candles. Yay. So we're all going to learn about candles. So Obviously, we all know what a candle is. It's a wick inside of wax, and uh, they come in different shapes and sizes, like pillars, pots, Hmm. candlesticks, you know, all of that. And because of candles, there have been inventions made, like candlesticks and candelabros, you know, Mm -hmm. and chandeliers. Um, So, obviously, in order to use a candle, you need to light it with a match or a lighter. Um, You light the wick, it burns. A lot of times the wick needs to be trimmed. You know, usually when you get like a brand new candle, it's like a fresh wick and oh, it's I hate really cutting long. it down though. I like, know. Oh, it's so pretty. It <laughs> is. But, you know, it it's needs a safety to... issue. Mm-hmm, <laughs> because if you trim it down, as we know, it, it burns slower mm-hmm. and it, you don't get all the smoky bits. Yeah. So, um, so because of this, an invention was made in order to trim the wick and it is candle scissors so usually they're mm-hmm. sold with like a little set candle scissors and i almost bought one on amazon it's like the candle scissors really and the cute. and the snuffer and these were made in the 20th century and um i remember my mom had a snuffer on our um on the fire or the fireplace mantle mm-hmm. and it was like 
uh, stick with a little bell. It just they literally so looked cute. like a little bell. I think it had like an angel on top or something. Aww. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But me and my brothers would like just light a candle just to snuff it because <laughs> it was so fun. It really is. Or like, cute. okay, we got to blow out the candles and we're like, I'm going to use a snuffer. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It looks just like a little tiny bell on a stick. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and so it just snuffs it out. It cuts off the oxygen. Um, okay. So going back to the beginnings of candles and candle making, they were uh, mentioned in biblical time biblical times dating back to the 10th century bc and the first dipped candles were made by the romans in 500 bc using tallow so think of dipped candles like i think they did it at like oh that was like pioneer days or whatever and you get the string you know and it's usually two strings or just one and you dip it Mm -hmm. and just keep dipping it let it cool dip it cool you know what i'm talking about like yeah, yeah so that dates back to 500 bc beef fat yes tallow Ooh, crazy um so before the use of candles oil lamps were most commonly used in roman italy and the first candle made from whale fat was in china during the oh see this is where the qin is that quin oh Qin <laughs> dynasty oh. and t- uh, 221 to 206 bc and candles were found in the mausoleum of the first um, emperor of the Chinese Qin Dynasty. I'm totally saying that wrong. Wrong. Is it this? No, not that. Not that spell. No, Q I N <laughs> Dynasty. Oh. Um, so it was found in her um, in the mausoleum, and <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there had there were also bronze figures excavated that had been painted with candles. So. During the period of Sung Sung Dynasty, I could say that, which ruled in China from 960 to 1279, candles were used as a means of measuring the passage of time. Mm, I love that. And they would make (laughs) marks on the candles. And when the candle reached that mark, they knew that an hour had passed. So they're using it to like, how long have I been sitting here reading this book? Mm -hmm. You know, (laughs) Um, in India, wax from boiling cinnamon was used for temple candles. Mm. Yak butter was used for candles in Tibet. And a fish. <gasps> Sorry. Lip. It's because I know that the the fat content mm-hmm. of yak, yak milk mm-hmm. is so, that is some solid. Yeah. <laughs> like, it would be so solid. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so they use that <laughs> <It's> for <like laughs> candles. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. um, a fish called the, ec- you- <sighs> I see, I don't know how to say this. You- you- Let me see. L- Just turn it really quick. Eulachon. <laughs> I can't because it's really tiny. I won't pee. Eulachon. Um, yeah that <laughs> yeah or it was also called the candle fish <laughs> <laughs> okay come on you could have just said that first but it's a i'm just kidding fish. i'm kidding i'm kidding and it's a type of smelt and it was actually uh, it was found from oregon all the way up to alaska during the first century a.d and indigenous people in this region use the oil from the fish in their candles so basically a candle was made by putting a dried fish on a fork and then just lighting it. And so there's your candle. <laughs> that must be an oily dang yeah. fish. So yeah, no, no, I'm like, is smelt oily? Probably because it's a type of smelt fish. Um, so <laughs> obviously. A fish on a fork. <laughs> fish on a fork is called a candle. <laughs> so candles are primarily. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, they, good. You stick a fish on a dingle hopper and then there you, you light go. it up. <laughs> So candles are primarily made from tallow and then later beeswax in ancient times. So then in recent centuries, they were made from sperm whales, purified animal fats, and paraffin. Hmm. And the early Greeks used candles on moon-shaped cakes as some as like some sort of honor to the goddess. Or I can't read. Of that some is really tiny sort, words, though, to, on your phone. <laughs> to honor the goddess artemis's birth uh-huh. on the sixth day of every lunar month and the tradition of putting candles on birthday cakes might be traceable to this custom but cakes with any resemblance to this and you know to modern birthday cakes mm-hmm. only like happened around 1600 in europe mm-hmm. so then in uh 403 to 221 bc during the warring states period there were bronze wares that were excavated that feature a pricket which is thought to have held a candle uh, the Han Dynasty from 202 BC to 220 AD hints at candles being made of beeswax used by statesman Zhu Yi in the Book of Jin. And an excavated earthenware bowl from the 4th century AD has a hollowed socket where traces of wax were found. 
Mm. So generally, these Chinese candles were molded in like paper tubes using um, rolled rice paper uh, for the wick. And then the wax was from like the whale fish from the mm-hmm. region. So in the Middle Ages, after the collapse of the Roman Empire, olive oil was the most common oil used for lamps. But when it became unavailable through trading, then candles became like began to be used more often because they couldn't do their oil lamps anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in North America and the Middle East, candle making was pretty much unknown because olive oil was so available there. So they were just like, why change it? You know, we oh, could just gotcha. do oil lamps. Mm-hmm. So people, <laughs> this was interesting. So people who made candles were called chandlers. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. And they were sometimes also referred to as smearmongers. Because, <laughs> because, I know, weird word. Smearmongers because they oversaw the ma- manufacture of like sauces, vinegar, soap, and cheese. And these smears, yeah, <laughs> all the smears. Um, uh, these candle makers used fats from their own kitchen and would even sell their own candles in their shops. But they weren't like as good as a true Chandler. That like they were just like, oh, I got some fat. Here's a candle, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, tallow fat from cows or sheep were the standard material used in Europe. And of course, they had a very unpleasant odor because <laughs> of all the glycerin. And the smell from the manufacturing process was so bad that it was actually banned by ordinance in several European cities. So, like, they couldn't make candles there because it was just too stinky. That's um, crazy. Just the process of, like, making it. So, rendering down the, the ugh, all the fat. And, like, so. without refrigeration. Oh, yeah. It's just no. going to be sitting there as fast Rancid. as they can Ooh. while they're, like, separating yeah. chunks of meat off the fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all Brody. for the love of a candle. <laughs> Who needs <laughs> so, to see? I know. <laughs> Beeswax was then discovered, and this was obviously a much better alternative for candle making because it doesn't smell bad. And, um, but it was restricted in use for like the rich and churches and royal events because beeswax candles were very expensive. Yeah, someone has to get stung a lot back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to gather it up. So in England and France, candle making became a guild craft by the 13th century. Mm. So I am going to read a direct quote from Wikipedia of the definition of a guild for those who don't know. So a guild is an association of artisans and merchants who oversee the practice of their craft or trade in a particular territory. The earliest types of guild formed as organizations or tradespeople belong to a professional association. They sometimes depended on grants of letters patent from a monarch or other ruler to enforce the flow of trade to their self-employed members and to retain ownership of tools and the supply of materials, but were regulated by the local government. Guild, this is crazy. Guild members found guilty of cheating the public would be fined or banned from the guild. And a lasting legacy of traditional guilds are the guild halls constructed and used as a guild meeting place. So oh. kind of think of it like, um, um, what is it? The um, Like a union? Yeah. Or like um, the, the masonaries. Oh, or oh, like Freemasons? Like Freemasons. Yeah. I couldn't think of the word right mm, now. So okay. it's kind of like a guild, I guess, because it's yeah. like you are protecting the um, like craft, the trade. Right. And so anyway so that was just the definition for those don't know uh so the tallow chandler's company of london was formed in 1300 and in 1456 it was granted a coat of arms and by 1415 tallow candles were used in street lighting and the first candle mold comes from the 15th century in paris so then with the growth of the whaling industry in the 18th century spermaceti which is the oil that comes from the cavity in the head of a sperm whale became the most common substance for candle making. Ew. Like, how do they figure that out? Right. That's what I'm wondering, too. Who's like, this shit's greasy. I know. Beeswax. Let's roll it up and try to light mm-hmm. it on fire. <laughs> Seriously. And like how? OK, so the head inside the cavity ugh, is just gross. So. They must have cut it open and it. At one point, it must have just been, this super resembles this. So mm-hmm. let's Maybe try to light it on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so. So the it's called spermaceti, and it was gathered by crystallizing the oil from the sperm whale, and this was the first candle substance to become available in mass quantities. Mm. Um, but it did also have a bad odor, <laughs> yeah. but it had a brighter light, and 
it was harder than tallow and beeswax. So it was really hard. And the first standard candles were made from spermaceti wax. And by the 1800s, a cheaper alternative was discovered, and this was colza oil. And it was derived from brassica campestris and a similar oil derived from rapeseed. And it had a clear, smokeless flame. Nice. And um, the nice. French chemist Michael Eugene Cherul, I picked some <laughs> weird, <laughs> it's like all these words I can't say in names. Joseph Louis Guy Lissac patented stearin in 1825. And like tallow, this was derived from animals, but it had no glycerin content. So. I totally know what that is. You do? Yes, it's used in beauty products. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then also in the 18th century, candle clocks were made. Oh, so my this gosh. Is when they I would love those. Put, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would put weights into the sides of the candle. And as the candle <laughs> melted, the weights would fall into a bowl and it would make a noise. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like a little alarm. Yeah, a little like, chime. Like, yeah. An I, hour's passed. Uh-huh. <laughs> So now we move to the industrialization era in the mid-19th century. So, in 1834, Joseph Morgan, who was a butcher from Manchester, England, invented a machine that revolutionized candle making. And it was, um, it used a cylinder with movable pistons to eject candles after they solidified. Oh. And this actually produced 1,500 candles per hour, or Dang. two tons of candles in 12 hours. That's crazy. Yeah, so that what was really this? ramping up. This is 1834. Wow. Yeah. Industrial so, revolution. Yeah. <laughs> and also something that changed is candle makers started using the braided wick instead of like the twisted wick. Mm. So instead of twisted cotton, it was like more braided. And this would um, make it like curl over as it burned. And it helped with the height of the wick and also the flame. And so these wicks were referred to as self-trimming or self-consuming wicks. Oh, okay. Then in 1848, so right after, uh... James Young established the world's first oil refinery at the Alfreton Ironworks in Riddings, Derbyshire. Two paraffin wax candles were created from naturally occurring paraffin wax in the oil. And in the mid-1850s, James Young distilled paraffin wax from coal and oil shells at Bathgate in West Lothian. And the paraffin wax was made from, um, like distilled residue after like the petroleum mm-hmm. was refined it's and, so weird <laughs> mm-hmm. and this was used to make like inexpec inexpec i can't say inexpec inexpensive there you sorry go. i it's got okay. there <laughs> candles and they were really high quality and they were like that bluish white wax and they bur- burned a lot cleaner and there was no odor so not like your tallow candles they are really bright and shiny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the downside to this is that early coal and petroleum derived paraffin waxes had a low melting point. So, Uh-oh. yeah. This pouring everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, the introduction of stearin discovered by Michelle Eugene Chef Rowe solved this problem. Stearin is a hard and dur- is hard and durable with a melting range of 54 to 72 degrees Celsius or 129 to 161 degrees Fahrenheit. So, by the end of the 19th century, most candles were paraffin and stearic acid. And in the 19th century, Price's Candles, based in London, was the world's largest candle manufacturer. Mm. And the origins of this trace back to 1829, when William Wilson invented, or invented, invested a thousand acres of coconut plantation in Sri Lanka. And he wanted to make candles from the coconut oil. Mm. And he also tried palm oil from palm trees. And then his son, George Wilson, made an accidental discovery. Ooh. Now, George was a talented chemist, and he used the te- technique of steam distillation. And he was able to make candles from multiple materials like skin, fat, bone fat. So skin fat, bone fat, fish oil, and industrial greases. Oh. And then in Syracuse, New York, uh, that in Syracuse, New York, it became the global trade or the global center, not trade center, sorry, uh-huh. global center for candle <laughs> manufacturing by the mid 19th century. And these manufacturers include Will and Brahmer, Balmer, sorry, Mac Miller, Moinch Cruiser, and Cathedral Candle Company. Hmm. So it was really ramping up by the mid, you know, 19th century. Mm hmm. But then the candle industry began to decline with, obviously, 
new inventions being right. created for lighting. <laughs> you have kerosene lamps and the invention of the incandescent light bulb in 1879. Dang, messing up everything. <laughs> yeah, so candles were still used for religious offerings, though, and like in churches and stuff. And then in the 1990s, there were new scented candle waxes. Yeah, yay! So like your Bath and Body Works candles. Right? Um, and like your Yankee Candle Company. So all these scented candles in the 1990s. And these waxes were either soy, palm, flaxseed oil, and sometimes they were blended with paraffin. And they were cost efficient. The wicks needed, uh, but the wicks needed to change to keep up with like the tougher to burn form. Like they were just harder to burn. So the wicks needed to be changed. Um, And then it's funny because then in the 2000s, faux candles and lanterns that (laughs) that, like use LED lights were used as decoration. (laughs) So it's like, why do you need to make candles? And now, you know. I have candles in my house, but when you buy candles, it's not for light. Um, it's for decoration or for smell. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, I've made candles myself. It's really easy. You could just buy a kit on Amazon. You buy everything that you need, and you just pour it in. I think I did one with, like, fresh lavender in it. Um, but, yeah, you could add essential oils and stuff. And I think that's another thing is, like, people turn more to, like, wax melts and stuff. So not really, like, candles. Yeah. Um, so now it's just your wax is smelly you want the good smell unless you Mm -hmm. do like the unscented like tea lights for i mean we had um (laughs) it's funny because at our wedding we actually did the fake tea lights like the yeah the turn turn it on stick a battery in Uh uh-huh and yeah we didn't have to worry about anybody getting lit on fire (laughs) yeah or like light a bush on fire Mm -hmm. but um yeah we do have like um emergency candles like the big giant ones that'll like mm-hmm. burn for 18 hours or something like that and um that's in our emergency box because <laughs> we live in earthquake country <laughs> oh my god i know right so okay so i have a fun fact okay so in the days leading up to christmas people burned a candle a set amount to re- represent each day and it was called a tiger candle or an advent count a candle oh so that's where we get like the advent you oh, know leading cute. up to christmas so anyways that was my spiel on candles and it was a lot of facts <laughs> a lot of dates but i learned a lot fun. but i'm yeah Good i think job. it's like yeah my favorites are the fish on a stick and <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> and the... so you just like dried it like dehydrated yeah. the fish but it was so. like so oily it just i think so yeah kind of like <laughs> time to dehydrate a like fish a sardine <laughs> i know that's why i'm literally like all right we need to go to the we need to go to a fish market. <laughs> but I don't think we could do it from a can. I'm pretty sure it's got to be. No, like, it's got it's an oil. I think it'd probably have to be fresh and like leave the head, all the bones, because that it's going to be the oily like that. Mm, I, know. I know one little product that actually you can still buy copies of the exact original model of like the timer candles. So it's like um, oh really? It's a little yeah. It's like six dollars for two of them because I wanted to buy one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Meant for small tapers, and so it has, like, a little metal clasp that has a slit, so you can stretch oh, it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the ones I'm looking at Is have, the like, goes, like the, the yes, lid? the little decorative like, like, seashell. Boop. Uh-huh. So it pushes up to the top of the side, so you scoot it down as far as you want it to burn, and when mm-hmm. it hits down to that, when the candle gets lower than the seashell, it snaps over and yeah, clasps so cool. the I flame out. That. And it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. I watched... Um, Oh, I could probably reference it or source it in here. There's a YouTube channel called Early American, mm-hmm. and it's so relaxing and so fun <laughs> because it's like everything from like the 1800s. Yeah. And, and um, or yeah, I think it's the 1800s. And so she shows um, getting the wax in the pot over the fire, you know, in the kitchen <laughs> and melting the beeswax. And then she's getting her wicks you know the long wicks Ooh, and she's doing like the two dipping dips so she does like the one side and then the other side and then nice. you like straighten it out on the table so you get like your your wick in with the thin layer of wax mm-hmm. like straight enough and then you just do that and then you hang it Aww. and it drip drip drip, drip. we're gonna do it i know <laughs> i remember it's completely I unnecessary that. but i, I won't too <laughs> i did like a pioneer day with girl scouts or something and we made yeah. candles or we watched someone make candles i can't remember i think That's i did cute. it I remember doing oh, the gold thing. A like gold the, panning. The panning for gold. <laughs> so. I did that at Knott's Berry Farm when I was a kid. Yeah, maybe that's what I'm I think they still do. Do they do the candle stuff? I remember at Knott's Berry know. Farm, the, the iron work, and then they like yeah. they put it in there like, touch it because it's cold. Yes, and like, I, don't I, don't I don't want to. I don't want to. It's um, just on fire. I, because the last time Kurt and I went, um, 
it was weird. We went through that little old part, but do they not have that anymore? I don't know. I really that can't was, like, remember. My part. It was Christmas time, so oh. I think that's why. Or it was, it was sorry. It was the end of Christmas time, and they still had like vendors out, and mm. like they have like a little market night type of thing they do. Mm. So I think that that's sense. what happened. All right. Okay. Time to snuff out this light. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. I'm taking it back again to the 1800s. No, we were just talking about that. Yeah. My case is about a socialite named Elsie Siegel. Oh, well, that's... Well, not Siegel, but Elsie is <laughs> a text grammar's name. Oh, it's such a cute name. Is it spelled E-L-S-A or E-L-S-E? E-L-S-I-E. Oh, I-E. Yeah. Okay. L-C. Okay, sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. She was born in 1888, and the exact date of her birthday is not known. So oh, okay. she's about 19 or 20 when this happens, because it's all depending on whatever her birthday was. I don't have an exact mm-hmm. date. Okay. Um, <clears throat> she was a socialite and a granddaughter of a extremely famous at the time, or celebrated, if not famous, um, war general named Franz Siegel. And that's her family's claim to fame is um, because of him. That opened up a lot of gates and doorways for an already wealthy family to stay above Mm -hmm. as a granddaughter. No, wait, where is this? This is in um, New York. Oh, they must be German because I'm like, that is Jack's grandpa's name. That is Jack's (laughs) grandma's name. That That is so so weird. But yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I'm like, those names are German because think um, Franz. That's like his grandpa Franz. Okay. Um, and yes, his, her grand, her grandfather did, um, here, I can actually pull this up super quick. Um, her grandfather was a German American military oh, anyway. officer okay. and he was, um, a, a really important immigrant. He came here and he did everything. Teacher, mm-hmm. he worked for the newspaper. He was a politician and, um, he was a union major general in the silver, silver word <laughs> in the civil, civil war. war. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's just when you were saying the names, I'm like, oh my gosh, these are German names because yeah, yeah. not only are they Jack's grandparents' names, <laughs> but I'm like, these sound very, and even the last name and stuff, I'm like, yep. mm. Franz. Okay, yes. Um, they were wealthy upper class, mm-hmm. and their mom taught a Sunday school um, job, essentially, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you, I, I guess her dad did nothing because what? I couldn't find what his job was. Oh, weird. I'm like, was he living off his See, grandpa's This is when fame. we need to get like the ancestry subscription oh, know, because right? with these old cases, you could look at census we records. We do have a lot of names. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be cool. It could be a tax write-off. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, her mom was really wonderful, and they went to Chinatown, and she would they would do missionary work, and she would take Elsie with her. It was mm-hmm. safe. They had a really nice time. They made lots of connections, and they were very well-liked. Mm-hmm. Everybody, um, the new Chinese-American immigrants that are living there were really happy to have them. Mm-hmm. And one of the jobs her mom specifically did was she would take her around to help um, with the really young sex workers mm. and those young girls that worked in the opium dens trying to help them mm-hmm. um, take care of themselves and try to get out of that. So it was really nice. It's kind of a, uh, what is the word I'm trying to think of? Progressive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty progressive and very caring, mm-hmm. good people. One of the people they met when she was um, in her early teen years doing their neighborhood rounds at their local restaurants for um you know to spread the word of what they were doing mm-hmm. um and uh an owner of a local successful chop suey restaurant his name was leon ling and he liked to go by an anglicized name of william and they like okay. to call him willie mm-hmm. and he was very educated he spoke really great english and he had a really nice roommate named chong sing that they mm-hmm. had met before and um you know they were quoted as being really great americanized good christianized men mm, okay. they were good people people mm-hmm. liked them and um leon um who 
does get called uh, William by Elsie. I may use that name. I just don't want to get messed up. Mm -hmm. So um, Leon became really good friends with them, and he would accompany them, kind of a chaperone, but just as a pal. And they'd Mm -hmm. go around doing shopping. He would treat them to lunch at his restaurant, or they would treat him. And um, he became a really good friend. But Elsie started getting really close to him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, they were just friendly, and they became really best friends. And so... Elsie started to sneak out to spend time alone with her friend, which, I mean, that's not cool now if you got to lie. But back then, that was a huge mistake. For a socialite Mm -hmm. family. like To be even sneaking with anybody. Oh, yeah. With anybody. So, June 9th, 1909, about 19-year-old Elsie left her parents' house on Wadsworth Avenue in New York and... This was the last time they saw her. This is the very last time that they saw her. She left her house and they they kind she was like, oh, I'm just going to go have lunch or meet a friend or something. Mm -hmm. But that was the last time that they saw her that afternoon. And just a few days later, pretty much like all of our cases, they just move right along, luckily. Mm -hmm. So just a few days later on June 12th, her father gets a telegram from Washington, D.C. And it says, quoted, I'll be home by the end of the week. Don't worry. Elsie. Okay. So just one week later, June 19th, the owner of a Chinese restaurant calls the police to do a welfare check on his cousin. And apparently his cousin lives upstairs above his restaurant. Mm-hmm. All these people are restaurateurs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he lives in um, an apartment complex on the very top floor. And he said he hadn't seen Leon. Oh, gosh. Uh, good old Willie. In about six days, and the door was locked, and there was no answer, and he was starting to get nervous. Like, they were close. They checked in on each other. So the police said, okay, you know, we'll go and check, And um, which even for me, I was like, wow, I was surprised they even went to go check, because for those times, mm-hmm. not, you know, the immigrants weren't mm-hmm. really well respected, even though they were literally building that coast at the time. So I was actually yeah. quite surprised, but they did an immediate welfare check. And um, they knock, knock, knock. There's no response. There's no response. You know, warrants were a thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm not like that. Yeah. So they <laughs> went in and the house is empty. It's completely empty except for a stripped bed. And there's a trunk that was tied up ready for shipment. Oh, OK. So like, you know, you'd, you'd ship stuff up. And if it didn't have a lock, I guess, or the uh-huh. lock was busted. So it was all wrapped up and ready like it was mm-hmm. going to be freighted. Well, the there's something coming from that trunk there's a smell and so the police (sighs) go over and they inspect again like the way that they treated evidence and everything so they just open it up they cut it open and inside is the body of a nude woman (gasps) she's wrapped in a bed sheet she's probably been dead for approximately a week and around her neck was a cord now what they say is a cord similar to the blinds what i'm thinking is they mean like a curtain tie back oh yes yes. and so that is tied around her neck also on her neck she has a very delicate gold chain that has what they call a bangle but it's a charm okay i think it's Uh a charm and the charm has her monogram her her initials Mm -hmm. and then she also has a bracelet with some really pretty fancy charms and on that is her initials if she had Leon's last name. <gasps> what? On her bracelet, her little fancy what? charm bracelet. So it must have been a gift. Hmm. His cousin said that Elsie was, in fact, Leon's sweetheart and that he'd seen them together at the movies and, you know, mm-hmm. having lunch and stuff around town. So homicide immediately, they that's what they rule it as. They, you know, come on. You don't kill yourself naked and throw yourself no. and tie yourself up yeah. in the trunk. So yeah. they immediately... Um, Start investigating. They take her body and they're asking questions. Now, at this point, no one has seen Leong or his roommate, Chong. Oh. And they're, yeah, yeah. And they're sure that they're connected somehow. They're sure because these are her friends. They're they're always around. Mm -hmm. And again, the stigma, they want to immediately investigate the immigrants. Mm -hmm. But... The guy is like, this is girlfriend. So here they go. The police are going. So unfortunately, the family 
told investigators, well, she's not missing. Like, she wrote us this letter. But at the same time, Anybody this was a, a common thing mm-hmm. of socialites. If your daughter disappeared, you didn't want to say she was missing. And you sure as hell didn't want to say she ran away. Yeah. So they're kind of ashamed a little bit. But in their mind, that's what they're hoping. That's what they're mm-hmm. banking on. And so, unfortunately, the police are like, well, we have a body and... We need you to um, try to identify the body. Yeah. Her poor father tried and he could not confirm that it was her. And so unfortunately, her mother had to get brought in and the mother is able to positively identify her through her jewelry. Yeah. And so she said, you know, then I'm like the state of her body because she had been in there at least like all cramped up and, you know, oh yeah, bruising probably Mm -hmm. and. And um, wow. I it's it's coming up on summer at that point. Oh, it is. It's, oh, so it's like June. a warm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably not a warm nice. cold body with restaurants underneath and humidity. Oh, yeah, and it's, I'm sure it was not nice. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so now the police have started posting flyers in local and national papers throughout America and Canada. They're like oh. on it. Okay. And they've posted photos of Leon and Chong and um, on the 20th of June. So this is just about a week. Bo- oh, I'm so sorry. The very next day. Oh, okay. The very next day they were contacted on the 20th by another restaurant owner. He says, my new cook looks just like Chong. Um, but he's going by the name R Singh. He didn't even change his last name. So oh. the ch- he went from Chong Sing to like Arn Sing. Yeah. But I was like, you know, the the pride of your last name. So it would just change. Yeah. And you just leave the area. And nobody knows who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, so he was going by R Sing. And so the police track him down. They find him. And he does admit his true identity is Chong. Um, but he said that he had nothing to do with it. They are asking more people questions now in town. Mm -hmm. And they also find out that Leon was living in the family home as a guest in the Siegel house. What? Yeah. So they're like, at some point they let him, they were, they had gotten that close. They had let him live with live them there? so mm-hmm. he no longer lived with no apparently his roommate i'm guessing it was just a short amount of time before mm-hmm. but like i'm guessing you know maybe there that was an issue so i know yeah. right and they're trying to act like they, they're because they're embarrassed they don't want to possibly fess up to their daughter having an affair with an immigrant yeah and so and running away with him yeah. possibly yeah yeah so they're not ponying up what's really oh my going gosh. on See, that's where i have a problem because mm-hmm. if like i don't care how I don't care what's going on. We'll move. We'll change our names if it's that big of a deal. Where's my kid? Yeah, where's my daughter? Tell what all happened of the information. to her? Here's everything you need to know. Mm-hmm. The responsible party needs to be right yeah, arrested. But mm-hmm. wow. And it's really rough because I don't have the name. I didn't write the name down because, again, it wasn't relevant. But mm-hmm. there was another case recently to this. I'm not sure if the socialite was... Uh, murdered or not or whatever but um that their family did the same thing lied Mm -hmm. about her missing Mm -hmm. and unfortunately it did hinder their case and that was during when i was doing this research so it was a thing i know i know that's very sad it's sad because it almost appears like i care more about my status than Mm -hmm. my child exactly right so um apparently uh they had found out, again, doing more research. It's not like the police can just type it up on the computer. So going back through their research, on June 1st, Leon had actually called the police on Elsie. On her? Yeah. And he said, um, I loaned her $300. And um, I, there was some misunderstanding about the payment. And there was trouble with the family now. Um. And so they wanted him out. So what he needed was he wanted to call the police and have an escort so he could come pick up some of his belongings without making Mm -hmm. a scene or someone, you know, trying to say he's stealing their things. And so I don't know how they don't remember this if it had just happened two weeks or Uh so-ish beforehand. So apparently, you know, the officer did um, escort his stuff. And um, after that... uh, I'm sorry. So immediately after this part, as they are realizing there's this is just that little chunk of information. Mm -hmm. So shortly after Elsie's body was identified, her dad had told investigators that Leon and the manager of a restaurant called the Port Arthur named 
uh, Chu Gang, so we're another person, so I'll just refer okay. to him as Chu, were both in love with Elsie. Oh. So Leon and Chu were both in love with Elsie. And apparently at some time on um, j- just, oh my gosh, there's so many things happen in such a small amount of time. Mm-hmm. So his dad, his dad, her dad had said on the 8th, they, the family had thrown a party. Mm-hmm. And both of the men, Leon and Chu, had both attended this party. Leon showed up drunk and belligerent. Oh, and gosh. he had like very publicly like yanked Elsie aside and was, oh, was like, which this is what like, the issue was. Maybe. So he yanked Elsie aside and he said, he told her if Chu and her were involved, that he was going to kill both of them. <gasps> and so uh, later when they talked to Chu about this, he corroborated this story. And he mm-hmm. said, yeah, he totally threatened to kill me. It's not the first time he's done it. Mm. Um, and, so the very next day after the party, um, uh, this is all from Chu. This is what he said. Okay. The very next day on June 9th, Leon had come to him and he said, hey, give me all the money that you have to finance me leaving town. So this is the very next day after um, this party and the incident. So he's going up to this guy that he, he threatened, threatened to, to kill. kill yes. And, and saying, he's give like, me. give me all the money <laughs> so I can leave. So I can get okay. out of town. And she was like, okay, I don't want you to kill me or yeah. you're freaking me out. So, so sure, no problem. Yeah. And so he gives him everything he had, which was $260. Oh, wow. And okay. so, yeah, little restaurant owner. Yeah. And so at that point, Chu does get arrested just because he's a suspect and that he's part of the story he knows something it literally happened the day after an incident yeah and then again it's like well we don't know if he's lying exactly. like he could be saying this whole story and he could have killed both of them or you know exactly. whatever so they got to cover all their bases i get it but yeah, yeah. It, it really is um it really is interesting because uh, that's like yeah oops. i'm sure that was probably the incident where the family was like i don't want you here anymore mm-hmm. you need to leave um wow sorry no, i was trying fine. to quickly find like what the value of that much money would have been back then because oh. it's a lot like that's a lot of money so yeah. i was trying to do it quick and well he I had given her 300 dollars, right supposedly so- yeah supposedly uh leon had given elsie 300 dollars and so, yeah. Why and then, does she need three hundred dollars? Exactly, <laughs> like, exactly. That is the interesting. Like, I did too. I wondered that too. It's just Maybe a, that's just a made up. I bet it is. It probably is. Because why would she need three hundred dollars? Exactly. From him? She's totally not going to need to. Yeah. Unless <laughs> it was like, give me three hundred dollars. I'm going to go buy tickets so we can run away together. Buy train tickets and then like, yeah. Just it doesn't seem yeah. like it was that. No. Okay. <laughs> so, um. He was actually, Chu was released pretty quickly after that. They realized, like, there's nothing else. They, he didn't have anything. You mm-hmm. know, there was no, um, there was no evidence that they were able to collect. Like, mm-hmm. there's nothing that, that showed up. There was no sexual assault evidence. Because they did know how to check for that. They just yeah. would look. They knew. There was nothing like that. Um, and so they're still, they're trying to figure out what happens. They rule out Chu has anything to do with it. So... They find some letters and they they realize that there is a pretty decent amount of back and forth with Elsie playing these two guys through letters. She's oh, telling, so she was yes, playing she's, both of them. Yeah, she's telling Chu in the letters, oh, don't worry about Willie. He's fine. You know, his anglicized name is William. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about Willie. He's nothing. But like, I, I can't leave him. I care about him. Just back and forth constantly. Wow. Back and forth between the two of them. And so through these love letters, they realize, okay, well, that that's kind of true. But mm-hmm. um, he literally wanted nothing to do with it anymore. He didn't want to die over. Yeah, you know, over a woman. <laughs> right, yeah. So um, Chong said, finally, when they get a hold of him, and this is what's happened in between. There's more investigation. Chong now admits to seeing what happened. And this is considered to be true this is as true as they believe it to be okay and so he said that um chong had stayed downstairs but he heard uh, like a fight going on you Mm -hmm. know upstairs with elsie and leon where they were supposedly supposed to be like working out whatever their issue was Mm -hmm. um they were fighting because she was like how dare you how dare you show up 
I'm sorry, this was 1030 in the morning on the 9th, that same day. Oh, okay. Um, after Leon had threatened Chu. So apparently this had happened before is mm-hmm. what I'm thinking. 1030 a.m. June 9th. That's when Elsie came over and she was embarrassed. That's why the fight had started because mm-hmm. she was like, how could you embarrass me like that and say those things? You're so ridiculous. Like, yeah. why would you treat me like this? And mm-hmm. my family, you know, you're friends of ours. Like, yeah. So, why would you do this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he was drunk, but yeah. still, yeah, not an so, excuse. Exactly. And she broke up with him. She was like, mm-hmm. I'm done. done. I'm done yeah. with this. Like, you're being ridiculous. And I think she honestly was in love with Chu more mm-hmm. than she was mm-hmm. him. And so Chong had snuck upstairs to kind of see what was going on. He was able to peek through an open door and he saw that Elsie had a pretty beat up face. There was blood on her face. And at this point, Leon had uh, like a handkerchief up to her nose and mouth to try to like silence her Mm -hmm. noise. Well, he, um, because I'm guessing Chong left essentially, there is no explanation of the cord around her neck. Mm. He didn't see that part. But he managed to knock her out unconscious with the handkerchief because she had stopped moving and Chong saw him uh, throw her to the bed take her clothes off, wrap her in the sheet. And then he grabbed a trunk that was in, Mm. they call a a cabinet, but I think it's like a closet. Yeah. And I'm assuming at this point, um, because Chong had said as quoted that this was dirty work and he didn't, he was going to go away Mm. for some ridiculous reason. I think he had something to do with it. He says he gave $200 of his own money to Leon I'm guessing, like, just take this, don't tell that I saw, maybe, mm-hmm. hush money, and, you know, go go away. Yeah. And so Chong left, and he moved in with his cousin. Everybody moves in with their cousin. Yeah. <laughs> and so he was held as a material. Chong was arrested and held as a material witness. And at this point is when um, detectives from Washington, D.C. had managed to backtrace and eventually find someone that remembers seeing Leon at the mm. telegram office. Okay. I was so, like, it's all, it's got to mm-hmm. go back there. Yeah. And I mean, you know, receipts from. were a thing. Yeah. And so he must have signed for the and receipt. Doesn't it say and, like where the telegram came from mm-hmm. other than just the yeah. city. Yeah, it does. So um, I think it says on the, like the delivery paper as well. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. Person, you know, stop. <laughs> <laughs> the person says that they're not missing. Stop. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, they found out that Leon had been passing this trunk around to his friends in town with a dead body in it. <gasps> Just, hey, can you hold this for me? What? Like, hey, can you hold them when that person didn't want to anymore? Hey, can you hold this for me? So he was passing it around and um, for storage until his very last effort, a friend was finally like, no, this box smells. Like, get it away. I don't want any part of it. Yeah. And I'm like, I oh, I know. Come like, on can now. you show me what's in here? Yeah, so why I know is this I'm box holding? smelly? Yeah. I don't want to hold rotten crap in my house or my restaurant. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, so. yeah, because a lot of them live <laughs> over exactly. their restaurants. Yeah. It's like, I don't want this in my Ew. in, in mm-hmm. this area, you in this building. up my food. Yeah. And so finally, you know, he had to be resolved to just taking it back to the apartment mm-hmm. and leaving it there and fleeing. Hmm. So Chong was released because the thing was, he was the only one that knew what happened and he mm-hmm. blamed it on someone else. There wasn't enough evidence that, so they just took it at face value mm-hmm. um, and Chong was released. And um, so papers in the U.S. and Canada continue this story with um, Leon's picture um, and his name and this story. Mm-hmm. And the case was circulated for months and months and it stayed in headline news for two years what wow yes. so like i mean i will have some pictures but there is newspapers there's pictures of everybody even mm. at the further time because when this happened mm-hmm. it was like 1909 and so i, know, I was like i want to see what they look like yeah there's there's pictures i'll have some i want to see what she looks like and uh you know she oh, she kind of reminded me of like eleanor roosevelt oh really <laughs> oh, okay yeah I I like that. a long like what they would call a handsome woman. Oh, you know? so okay. kind of like she seems very tall. Like mm-hmm. it's interesting. You looked at the picture and I'm like, she seems tall. Yeah. So, um like I'm wondering if they were even are they handsome? Or are they just like um, Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. They're, yeah. I'm like, I'm just picturing all yeah. this where it's like this love it's triangle. Crazy, right? I'm like, yeah. is everyone like really good looking? Well, <laughs> I don't have pictures of Chu, but the pictures oh, okay. are of um Leon and Chu. Leon and Chong. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, the only update to anything, uh, he was never found. 
they never found him. But in 1910, so just a year after the Secret Service, because, of course, they got involved. It was like a high priority. Yeah. The general, mm-hmm. like, they figured we have responsibilities. Yeah. Um, the Secret Service says that they are pretty sure from what it sounds like and trying to stake out um, all kinds of, um, you know, train stations and, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, tips and whatnot they said they're pretty sure that he ended up catching a train that took him to canada and then Mm. he got on a boat and probably went back to china um one of the really sad things about this time was that uh everybody blamed elsie nobody felt bad oh my god it was her own fault she almost deserved it for um you know no yeah tramping it up with immigrants and how could you yeah yeah and that they were basically like she kind of yeah that she deserved it and then at that point was when it really really difficult this fueled the fire for the asian immigrant hate on that coast it was really hard and there was a lot of hate crimes that happened and People oh, stopped no. going to those restaurants. Oh, it was really no. sad. It was like a down, a downward yeah. spiral, spiral for yeah. that area for a really long time. And I mean, the reality is all that's not great still to this day, but it was the very beginning of when mm-hmm. it was really bad because at this point, I know a lot of things that were happening on that coast was a lot of, um, uh, issue. If you've ever seen that movie gangs in New York, that movie is true, mm-hmm. you know, but, um, that was like a interpersonal with the different people that immigrated over from like Ireland and Britain. Mm -hmm. But I think people forget that a lot of this country was built by immigrants that came over from Asia as well. Yeah. And they worked really hard. And then they, this whole thing just was terrible. It was was so sad in so many ways. Yeah. Getting their restaurants burned down. And so it's really sad. Yeah. It's crazy. People suck. Man, so yeah, and poor you know, that Elsie. food is probably so good. Oh my gosh. Man, now I'm like hungry. I'm like, yeah. all this talk about like restaurants, oh Chinese God. restaurants. No, I'm like, like, oh, I know. Ooh, I want drop soup. I know. I was like, I want some egg, egg drop soup. Yeah. Mm. Oh, this is but. just so sad because I'm like, I'm looking, I'm just thinking about it. I was like, she was 19, having fun, sneaking around, yeah. living her life, being a teenager. And I she know. got killed for it and then blamed for it. Yeah. Um, I just bang my mic. <laughs> boing, okay. boing. Well, that was good. Thanks. It was good job. Sad. I it's was always like, crappy literally, when on... they don't find it. I'm like, yeah. I think Chong did something. I, I mean, they probably were in on it together. Like this girl's been playing us the whole time. Let's take her out. Well, Who Chong knows? was just his friend. Remember, he had nothing to do with. Oh, 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 that's right. No, it oh, was it was Chu. Chu. Mm-hmm. Chu. Chu. Yeah, but okay. Chong was just, complicit. Yeah. I think enough. Like, why don't you go up there and stop your friend? Like I the, know. I'm like, he just stood there and watched it all happen. So they're like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, you're like, literally smothering her to death. Yeah. Like, let her go. Yeah. Like, this is not the way to do it. You're and gonna now life. I am just like, I'm guessing Chong must have left the room and then he strangled her. Because the, the Maybe. I, I think the like handkerchief over sure her was... face was to make her unconscious. And then, and then to yeah. finalize that. Because there was, there. that's just the assumption. I didn't see anything about it. But yeah, there is like... um. I guess I'll probably end up just having, I'll add a bunch of pictures, but there's like all the mm-hmm. newspaper clip, like this whole I know, thing. I'm like, I want to, you need to show yeah. me pictures now. But, oh, um, I know. I'm like, I want to see their faces. I'll, okay. I'll react have part of the real time okay. to what they look like because oh, I, as I, you know, it's like when you listen to an audio book or something, it's like you're trying to picture it in oh, your God. head and then it's right. like, <laughs> oh, that's what they look like. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so like, even with this, case i'm like i want to see do you okay. have a face yeah so okay. this is what they <laughs> oh i mean because it's yeah. a sketch mm-hmm. okay and then, but yeah it's really interesting for her being a socialite i don't know the pictures there's photographs of the men oh so, there are uh-huh. that is weird Isn't like she is a socialite her family has money why doesn't mm-hmm. she have an actual picture huh so this it just looks like a vintage picture <laughs> this guy bit, here like dark hair is and stuff chong mm-hmm. okay this is the uh chong Sing, the roommate the That's roommate. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And then, Ooh, he's very dapper. Yeah. Yeah, they were, like I said, they, they were, were well-respected, like, well, yes. successful, uh-huh. like, very well, li- yeah, very <laughs> like, very well-liked. Yeah. Very well-liked. Yeah. Men. Now, here's the thing. I don't have the picture of Leon because he was hiding, but... Uh, yeah. the, Do they have a sketch? Yeah. So, and like, so what he, he looked, might look like, or mm-hmm. is it... Okay. Yeah. Handsome. Like, the same. Just... Oh, yeah. You know, both, like... Dapper. Well-dressed and... Yeah. 
slicked back hair. Oh and... yeah, nice hair, suit and tie, mm-hmm. and yeah, I could see if they yeah were well respected and yeah, they liked him a lot and probably good businessmen, restaurant men, you know. So here wow. we go. Sorry, I found a picture. He was very <gasps> oh yeah, handsome. oh yeah. Oh, he's young. Yeah, they. I'm thinking. I mean, they were they, both probably. Yeah, like they never told age. me what the, this. There doesn't say what their ages are, but yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yep, young. You can tell the little baby faces. <laughs> yeah, it looks like was Chong like... was probably a little bit older than him. Yeah, yeah, he looked a little older. It's just very... unless the picture was taken a little when, that's like true. later when yeah, he was older. That's definitely true. So but... here's another picture of her, um, or like a. This is a photograph of her. I'm sorry, and this is the oh, one there where. Is one. I, yeah, it's just you can see it's like OG Photoshop. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I think she looks kind of similar to Eleanor Roosevelt. She does. The, the sketch made her look a little bit. Like I said, she's a handsome woman. She wasn't like, you know, a handsome woman. That's yeah. what they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a the handsome high woman neck where, collar. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I looked at her. She, you could tell she has a long torso. So I'm thinking yeah. she's kind of tall. Yeah. But well, yeah, the whole thing was just a bummer. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Really There's like another pretty. Oh, okay. So, yeah, like, you know, a... I think what happens is they have, like, they take those old photographs and then they render them by hand mm-hmm. when they don't come out very good. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, any range between those <laughs> photographs. <laughs> Just take the three and mesh it into one. And that's but, of course, it didn't like. matter if she was a chud yeah. you know, or beautiful. <laughs> but, yeah, it is interesting when you do have photographs um, of, like, I don't know, in the 1900s. So I know. I was crazy. thinking of the timeline and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. are there pictures? But I'm like, oh, it was like the early 1900s. So, yeah, people <laughs> yeah, were getting were, pictures mm-hmm. taken then. I mean, you have a lot of pictures from the early uh, 1900s. Yes, I collect them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have them all the way. I have some as old as the Civil War and Abraham Lincoln being yeah. president. Yeah. That's so cool. They are fun. Okay, we got to go look at those now. Oh, my God. I <laughs> like, I want to see the old, old My ones. favorite one is the one that you and me and my sister, Crystal, both tried to find his oh, name yeah. um the back of the photo very handsome um caucasian looking probably light blondish hair mm-hmm. bitch and mustache oh, and yeah. the back of the picture says like his name went on an antarctic expedition and never returned yeah we were like what <laughs> unless that's what he told his family just I bail know. going to antarctica <laughs> like, for Hi. science <laughs> because like uh, with the dates too because you have the date yeah. that the photograph is taken so, so you know mm-hmm. the time like the time frame and yeah, so we, we were like and looking of course, up all though, the expeditions swear, it the was, crew list mm-hmm. and stuff and sometimes they're not listed because especially too his name was very like james like yes a it very was common. yeah and but we tried and we, we think we got I, pretty mm-hmm. close there's a couple pictures that i was like oh this might be him or mm-hmm. that might be him and i think what what we settled on was that we're pretty sure that he went out on one of those expeditions but um might have been like a crappy crew member is what yeah. i'm thinking just like Maybe. a hand or something where they he wasn't gonna get credit because mm-hmm. he just helped he the boat the trip manifest the, the exactly list. yeah because yeah. there was some that was just like crew member crew member crew member. and you're like what is their name yeah so he could have just been one of those like but wow anyways well, that hold was on really good. i'm oh, trying wait. to find okay the value of 100 this is insane the, oh, value, the value of the yes money i looked that, it up okay. yeah i'm sorry i, I like i should have done it earlier i love doing that yeah. so this isn't exact but the value of a hundred dollars in 1909 the year that she was murdered was uh-huh. three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars <gasps> so we're talking almost ten thousand dollars he supposedly loaned her so that couple hundred bucks that chong gave leon was six thousand dollars wow wow that is nuts <laughs> even in like now i'm like i, I, I love don't... you but i don't think i can loan you ten thousand dollars <laughs> I don't even think I have ten thousand dollars. <laughs> but it's just like that's crazy. That is some don't tell I saw you murder someone yeah, money. Seriously. And then it's extra sad that I got goosebumps. Poor Chew. I know. Gave him all the money he had to not get killed possibly. Get killed. Yeah, because, almost ten thousand yeah. dollars. Two hundred and sixty dollars is almost ten thousand dollars in today's wow. buying that power. That's crazy. That poor thing. It was must have, it must have been his life savings. Oh yeah. Just like I don't want to die. Here's all my money. <laughs> no wow. no chick is worth it. No, it's never worth it, and it's never worth it to kill someone. Just no, because for oh my god, get over it. Whatever. Yeah, why get would o- he give her ten thousand dollars? What does she need ten thousand dollars exactly. for? Unless she had some. Mm, mm, I don't know. You know, you never know. They could have been. She could have had debts. She could have been gambling. You yeah, don't know. We don't. know. But it's just crazy because. But again, if he was smart enough, he may have. This is one of the things you and I talk about. Like these crimes from back then are so interesting, more so because there are so many holes. Oh, yeah. And you're like, he could have lied to have this alibi of like, oh, well, I left her house. We don't have anything to do with each other because Mm -hmm. she owes me money. And that immediately tends, you know, money makes people end relationships over. And so. Wow. So that's that. 
So he's just never been found. Nope. Yeah. And I mean, at this point, you know, he's dead. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, he was never found. And they think he just went back home to work on a farm. How bad does that suck? You fuck up your life by killing someone. You had a successful restaurant. Mm -hmm. Well respected. You had to go work on a farm Mm -hmm. because you couldn't keep your shit in check. Wow. What an idiot. Mm hmm. Yeah, clearly he did it because, like, why would you flee? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And he's tossing this trunk. And around. even if, yeah, right. And even if Chong was like involved in some way, he was still the only person who kind of knew the truth and didn't mm-hmm. run. Yeah, he was right there. Yeah. So it would make sense. Like, why would you give someone else money? Yeah. That's what gets me. As I'm like, why would you give someone else money to go away? That should have been enough. It should have been aiding and abetting then. Yeah. Wasn't was that a thing? You know I more don't about think it this. Was then. Crap. No. It was kind of like, oh, we don't have enough. And yeah, no. Ooh, we went a whole hour. Lucky I you know. guys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and if you want more of us, listen to us on Patreon. Because <laughs> we are going to record some whoop more whoop. Patreon. Okay. Well, with that, stay crafty. And not cry me. Bye. Bye.